Hi guys, today's video is um, as a result of a request by Gail. I'm just um, going to be running through a couple of things that she asked me, which one of which was that she's new to cricket and she's having what well, the same problems that we all did when we first started with our cricket machine is that the paper is snagging etc which we've all gone through and to a certain extent Gail it really is just trial and error and playing and somehow these things just seem to work themselves out however you did notice um, this little um, guide that I have down here to be honest I don't really use it that much now every so often with a new paper um, but it's quite useful and I've stuck it on the inside there and this particular guide I actually got off um, above Ruby's studio um, off her blog um, I'll put her details at the bottom of the page now for you um, but she also has a really comprehensive guide as well that you can download for free or you can purchase the hard copy um, and basically what she's done is she's gone through and tested every single brand that you can th even think of and given you the settings that she would suggest which is great but obviously each machine to a certain extent is individual so they are only guidelines. They do, I think, tend to work, but if you see some of the ladies, they'll say, oh, sometimes I need to put this through twice, whereas I might be able to run my one through once. So it's it just varies time to time. But just as a basic guide, most of the time for most heavy paper to light card and heavier card, I'm gonna be using my settings where my blade will be at five, or six which is maximum so number one is the lightest and number six is the deepest so the higher the number the further the blade is going into the paper then over on this side we have our speed and our pressure dial these are indicated here so the first one is your speed and you'll know because one it says on the side here anyway but as experience you'll see it but as you move it it will start to tell you so as you can see as I move it the little bars change and also it tells you it's at max high medium low and minimum now when people um, say to you right I've set the pressure at four blade six uh, speed two whatever this is what it means it's talking about the number of bars across so minimum is number one two is low so you can see there's two little dots. Three, there's three little dots just there. Let me just zoom in a tiny bit on these dots for you. Four is high, and as you can see, it's four little dots. And five is maximum. So that's what they're talking about there. On speed, again, speed, to a certain extent, is personal preference. If you're doing something really delicate or intricate, go quite low. I usually, the lowest I would probably go is low. I wouldn't usually go on minimum, but you might do minimum if you were doing vellum. I've probably cut vellum once on my Cricut um, so if it's very intricate um, then go on the lower settings if it's sort of medium intricate go on medium etc most of the time I'm on max the Cricut is very good it's pretty capable of doing quite intricate things without um, having such a problem for example well, this lady here looks quite an intricate cut and this is from Forever Friends but I whipped that round at minimum because it's quite a big cut at about probably six or seven inches so although the actual cuts are quite intricate because it was quite big it was able to whip round that quite quickly so again think about the size as well so the bigger it is even intricate cuts it's not so difficult because it's able to get in and out of those movements a lot more simply so again it's lots of little things to think about but again it's just experience and then on the pressure dial the same thing applies on the little dots you've got the same little dots and the pressure dial is this second one down here now the pressure is literally the amount of pressure that the the machine is putting through the blade onto the mat so usually your pressure and your blade depth are going to correlate to a certain extent so if you've got your blade at quite deep say five or six you're probably going to go for a higher pressure sort of near the five uh, four or five on here which is your max and your high sometimes however if you were cutting vinyl 
you would want to do what they call a kiss cut which is you don't want to go all the way through you want to cut through the vinyl but you don't want to cut through the backing so you put your blade depth at maximum but you put your pressure down at quite low that's one of the occasions where that would differ but those instructions are given almost always with the vinyl um, especially if you buy Cricut vinyl it actually tells you what pressure and blade in these instructions to put it at so you don't need to remember that um, okay so on your kind of normal card uh, paper pattern paper etc you're probably looking at blade four or five pressure three or four again for me I tend to prefer to cut right through even if it marks my mat so I would probably go for five and four on the pressure so but on all cardstock and heavy paper I always go on max I don't mind that it marks my mat it doesn't bother me as I said rather have a cleaner cut so um, that again is a choice thing on what you prefer if you don't mind it marking your mat and eventually obviously that will wear that away then go for that slightly heavier pressure and and blade depth to get it through um, and speed again I've already discussed so I hope that helps um, on that side of things Okay, so now we're going to go to uh, Gail's next question, which was regarding colouring paper dolls. Um, now, I did have one cut out, but <laughs> for some reason I seem to have mislaid him. So we're going to just use a piece of paper here. The principles are the same. Um, and I use my Pro Markers, and then I cut out my paper doll, and I usually cut it out on blackout, and I use the Peach Keem stamps um, to, to stamp in a face on my on my little uh, paper doll okay and when you're um, stamping with your peach king stamps if you do do that or anything like that use your memento ink pads because they're dye based rather than alcohol based like your stays on etc so um, because pro markers are alcohol based inks um, if you use something like an alcohol based ink um, then what would happen is that would start to blend in uh, with your colouring so you need to make sure that you use a memento ink pad which will not then move once it's dry so I'm just gonna stamp a little face here so we've got our face just to give us a guideline just so that we've got that for doing our colouring um, and then we can use that to sort of colour around his little face okay okay so the first thing that I always tend to do is I do a little bit of colour on the eyes um, because I think it's nice to give them just that little colouring around on the eye just to make it look more realistic so literally just do a little line around the edge of that black line there um, if you were going to do the blackout feature but do googly eyes or something then obviously that's not so relevant but I just think that gives it a little bit more lifelike appearance um, and then I would get something like so I'm going to start here with my blush so we're going to start with a darker colour on this occasion and we're going to do his little cheeks like so and also make sure always that your um, memento ink is actually dry then while that's still wet I'm going to go over and around what would obviously be cut out but what would be his face in my in this case it's going to be my uh, satin and I also go over where my blush has been because that blends that through and don't worry that you know that it looks quite dark in areas or whatever because it does always um, tone down and also please forgive if I've missed any pieces because obviously I'm trying to do this actually what I'm doing is looking at the little video screen rather than what I'm colouring in so it makes it a little bit more difficult because I can't see what I'm colouring in because of the camera tripod <laughs> so okay so now I'm just going to where there was accents of his little blush cheeks you can wait for this to dry a little bit but I'm going to while it's still wet I'm actually going to go in again and just add a little bit more to the cheeks to give it a little bit more rosiness and if you wanted to if you felt it was necessary you could um go in and put an even stronger colour but I think uh, that colour looks quite nice I'm quite pleased with that colour so then you just literally wait for that to dry and if you see when you pull back 
you can see how it starts to now look as it's drying it's it starts to kind of even out and then there are sort of darker patches that those darker patches actually do go away as it dries out okay so I hope that helps I'm sorry it isn't on actual paper doll as I said I seem to have mislaid him perhaps he ran off in the night um, and thanks again everybody for watching bye for now <laughs>